Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and today I welcome you guys back to yet another Fire Emblem 5 Civilization Let's- wait, did I just say Fire- <laughs> I just said Fire Emblem 5. No, we're not playing Tracia 776. Cool as that might be, we are sadly playing- actually, I shouldn't say sadly, it's a- we're playing- Anyway, we're playing as Hector. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. That was the best introduction I've ever done. It really sets the stage. So, uh, yeah, it's time for the third Civilization V Fire Emblem playthrough. And this is going to be a massive game, ladies and gentlemen. 18 different civs, some of them brand new. And uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. We're playing on the map of Jugdral. That's the world of Fire Emblem 4. It's an absolutely massive map, which is why I uh, thought it uh, fitting to have a lot of civilizations present in this one. And of course, the leader we are going to be playing as is none other than Hector of Ostia. He was actually the first civilization I wanted to play, but he was bugged, you see. Uh, you couldn't play as him. Well, you could, but the tech tree was bugged. You could have him in the game as a AI, but you couldn't really play with him. Uh, however, a patch recently came out, and the person who made Hector has fixed him, so now all of his unique units are present. They weren't previously, and he can be playable, which is why we're going to play him, because he's the most frequently requested leader I play. So, uh, what is it that makes Hes Hes Hester <laughs> Hector so good? Well, uh, his civilization bonus is called Ostian Thunder. All units start with the cover one promotion. This is really fucking good, because it means that basically all of Hector's units takes a lot less damage from ranged attacks. This means that I do believe the cover one promotion gives you a 33% uh, defense against all ranged attacks, and this includes city bombardment, which means that Hector's units are very resistant to being bombarded by enemy cities. This makes him good at attacking, even though it should be like a defensive bonus, it also really matters on the offense, because... Pretty much whenever you attack an enemy civilization, you really want resistance to ranged attacks, because ranged attacks is primarily what they will use to defend themselves with. And he also receives two influence per stern, per stern, from city-states that he could demand tribute from. This isn't such a good bonus, I mean, you have to put a lot of your units around a city-state to, like, frighten it, and that will earn you points, but two influence per turn isn't really that much, and it's quite limited in what you can do. Like, you have to have your army physically placed around a city-state to get this bonus, and there's a limited amount of city-states you'll be able to do this with, but it's nice, I guess. Anyway, so Hector has a unique building and a unique unit. The first unique unit is the General. The General is a unique knight replacement that doesn't ride, it's an infantry unit uh, that has a lot more combat strength, 25 combat strength, that's a lot. Uh, but of course it only moves 2 as opposed to the knight's 4, and it costs iron instead of horses. So if you get horses as Hector, pretty much always just want to sell them, because you're not going to be using a lot of horses, unless you're planning to go like horsemen or chariot archers. Um, they also have uh, the unique generals promotion, so they spawn great generals a lot faster, which is fitting considering they're generals. They're really, really good, really strong. We haven't seen them up until this point, I think, even with Hector in the game, because they have been bugged and not presents. But I'm very much looking forward to trying out these generals. Then, arguably the strongest part of the Civilization Toolkit is the Ostian Keep. It's a unique castle that has a lot more defense and hit points added to it. But what's amazing about it is that it grants you plus three happiness. Uh, this is absolutely insane. If you somehow get your hands on the Neuschwastein Wonder, then uh, basically all castles will be worth like something ridiculous, like five happiness. And then you could also get that policy in the autocracy tree that I think gives you two happiness per castle. So pretty much you won't really struggle with happiness when playing as Hector if you manage to get your hands on the right stuff. So with that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be jumping into this game and checking out our starting locations. As I, as I said, absolute crap ton of leaders available in this game. Yeah, I do believe there's 18 or 17 in total. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna be playing on standard speed, and the difficulty is going to be immortal. So, for all of you guys who really want to see me play on Deity, I tried. I got absolutely curb stomped. There's some of these leaders right here that just gets insane on Deity. One in particular, which we will talk about when we meet her, pretty much makes it impossible to play Deity games. Because in Deity games, the AI just spirals out of control and wins the game on turn 200. It's absolutely crazy. I wish there was a difficulty setting between Immortal and Deity. So, uh, however, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going a Liberty Opener in this game. So I hope you guys will be enjoying that. I'm going to try something brand new. I, in fact, I have a bit of a strategy in mind. And I'm looking forward to trying out a brand new opener that I don't usually pull off in my games. 
Anyway, so let's take a look at the starting location. Uh, it's a pretty good one. We start next to a mountain. We got dyes, gems, stone. A lot of production tiles available right here from the bat. I think we're just going to found... Yeah, we're just going to be finding the city right here because this sounds like a pretty good location to me. Now, because I'm playing with 18 liters, I'm going to be playing with quick movement. And the reason behind this is that it's going to take for fucking ever if I play with animations on because it's a big map and... Yeah, it, it's a big map. <laughs> Even with my turbo computer, it's gonna lag a lot if I turn on animations, so... And it's just gonna go faster overall. So I'm actually gonna be doing something unique. I am strongly considering opening up monuments. And the reason behind this is gonna be very apparent very soon. Because, I'm, as I said, I'm going to go a very specific opener. In fact, I'm going to research animal husbandry, because I... I'm going to try and get my hands on the Sword Altar. So this is a new Fire Emblem Wonder. I mean, it's been always been present in the older games, but I have never really looked at it twice. It's not amazing. It gives you four happiness, and all of your uh, civilian units gets plus one movement. I think this includes Great Generals, but I'm not sure. I don't think so, because it's civilian. I don't think the Great General is considered a civilian, but... It means that your settlers and your workers will have three move, and this sounds really good. So I'm gonna try to get my hands on this little wonder, which is why I'm opening Animal Husbandry, and we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I wanna get my hands on that ruin that's like right next to Castle Ostia. So let's see how it goes. So that's why I'm going for a monument, because I wanna get the Liberty Opener immediately. Now, I'm not gonna be opening up Tradition, and for that reason I won't be getting the three culture per turn that I usually get from the Tradition Opener. The Liberty Opener gives you one culture per city instead, which is an very weak start. However, the Liberty actually used to be my favorite opener, but it's just so bad compared to Tradition. Or it's not that Liberty is bad, it's just that Tradition is so ridiculously good. So, however, since I am playing on Immortal and not Deity, I was uh, considering, you know, let's just do a Liberty opener, because Liberty games can be quite fun when done right. Anyway, we just got a Spearman, that's always nice. I do believe I'm playing with Raging Barbarians. I'm gonna be going an Honor opener as well at some point and try to get some culture of the Barbarians. I really like Barbarians. I know a lot of people don't, but I think I find that they make the early game a lot more interesting because you actually have to build units to defend yourself with. There's a lot of shit going on. And they also punish the AIs for... Like, the AI loves to send out its settlers. And I find that having Raging Barbarians on punishes that a lot more. So the settlers often get captured, which leaves me a nice opportunity to go and capture them and get a free worker. So, yeah, I'm a little bit biased in that regard, but I just enjoy Raging Barbarians. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. Anyway, we get Population and cast Lost Yow. That's pretty much the best thing we can get. And in fact, the city isn't even growing anymore. What if we... No. The city actually <laughs> needs to expand before it can grow, which is uh, which is quite interesting. Anyway, we're going to be going a uh, Scout. We already got our Monuments, and so now we're getting three Culture per turn. So we should be able to get that uh, Liberty Opener pretty soon. In fact, Ostia is starving? Are you kidding me? That is pretty insane. I don't think I've ever had my city starve so fast. However, it's gonna grow in one turn. So... Hopefully it should stop. Start? Oh my god, it just went down to two citizens. That's awful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, apparently the extra population that I gained did not really help me out a lot at all. Anyway, so we should most likely go for mining, I think. Or, since we have dice, we might want to go for calendar. Now, if this was a DD game, I probably would have rushed a library, and maybe I still should, but I haven't quite decided yet. Now, what's amazing about Liberty, and what makes Liberty very different, is that you get a free settler and you get a free worker. This means that you t you basically can spend your production elsewhere. You don't actually need to, uh, you know, spend, like, 15 turns building a settler, you don't need to spend 15 turns building a worker, so Liberty greatly speeds up your early game expansion, which is the purpose of it. Of course, you trade off some amazing benefits long term with tradition, which grants you like free aqueducts in four cities. That's a lot of production that you don't have to waste on building aqueducts. Shall the clay and in fact, I just got another uh, ruin with a free tech, so that's great. So let's see if we can find some. Ah, look at that! We got Leon. So Leon's in this game. This guy usually gets curb stomped into oblivion very early on. Um, Leon, of course, he's a relatively peaceful uh, leader, but of course, he has those Demon King moments where he suddenly goes crazy. It's kind of funny how that's built. You know, sometimes when you click on him, he'll go like, rawr, rawr, and go kill yourself. But uh, Leon, the Great Vampire, is a fun mix between science and faith. They get a lot of science, they get a lot of faints. 
They have druids, which are like ranged crossbowmen that can shoot over mountains and stuff, and then get bonus damage against cities. And they also have the uh, Grotto Research Lab, which is a research lab that grants uh, extra science. No, it's a temple that grants science, which is really, I think it's 10% extra science. It's ridiculously strong. So I don't think we will be going uh, much of a religion game. Uh, I don't really consider Hector a religious leader. Um, we can only get five religions and there's 18 leaders here, so I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to get a granary immediately. Not even going to go for my worker because I'm going to get my free worker anyway. So I, I'm not particularly worried about that. However, it seems like Grado might be really close. Anyway, let's adopt Liberty. There we go. Of course, the Liberty opener, pretty crap. Only one culture per turn. It's going to take us eight turns before we get our uh, second policy, which kind of sucks a little bit. Leon wants to get an embassy in our capital. I'm not particularly interested in that. And in fact, if I don't want to get my workers captured, I'm probably going to have to send my spearmen back at some point to help defend Castle Ostia. There's no point in getting an early game worker if you don't have the military to defend them. In fact, I just forgot to shoot on these guys, but... I might be able to get some promotions on my scouts. Scouts level up pretty fast, and getting plus one vision on them early can be pretty good. So I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yep, they earned a promotion, so that grants them vision plus one. You know, this is such an easy kill that I'm just going to snag it immediately. Spearmen versus archers in open ground. I might as well just take out this barbarian encampment immediately. And here is Ryoma. I decided to put some of the Fates leaders back, because I kind of feel like having some Fates leaders presence makes the game... A lot more fun. Even though Ryoma and Sander, yeah, Sander's in this game, I spoiled that. They aren't amazingly designed compared to the other guys, but I still felt like adding them back into the game. So Ryoma is here. He plays very similar to Japan, I think. He's very loyal, pretty aggressive, uh, but also very honorable, so he doesn't break his deals. Um, he has the Samurai, which are a unique swordmaster, or <laughs> unique swordmaster, unique swordsman replacement that can attack multiple times. And he also has the Master Ninja which are, I think, a unique crossbowmen that can uh, that deals bonus damage to wounded units. They're pretty good. Both Sandra and Ryoma are pretty OP, but hey, they're fucking Sandra and Ryoma. It's to be expected, I guess. Anyway, let's clear out this barbarian encampment. 25 gold, easy PC. And at some point, I'm probably going to have to send these spearmen back. Now, I can grant cover too, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can get that really early on. It doesn't really benefit me in any big way, though. I'm just debating whether or not I should get Drill or Shock. There's a lot of open terrain here, but there's a lot of rough terrain around Castle Ostia, so I think I might just go for a uh, Drill 1. But yeah, I'm gonna probably, like, loop around with my Spearmen, explore this area right here, and then send them back to Castle Ostia. Anyway, seems to be a lot of open ground here. A lot of good expansion locations. A lot of forests. Seems like we just encountered Leon. Yeah, this is definitely Leon, Greater Warrior. So Leon is actually our close neighbor. He's very close. If this is the borders of his capital, then he is pretty close. We might we might end up uh, getting into an early war with Leon. Yeah, I think I'm going to run away from these barbarians right here. I don't really think there's any point in fighting them. So, ooh, look at this. We got wine, stone, gems. This looks like a pretty good location to expand, if you ask me. It's a little bit far away, considering there's, like, mountains between us, but I think it could end up working pretty well. Jesus Christ, guys. What? Leave me alone. Okay, maybe I should just fortify up here. Yeah, I, I think if I run away, I risk, the, I risk running into more barbarians. If I fortify, I don't think this barbarian brood is going to go after me. Okay, so now I need to think. Am I going to go for... Citizenship and get a worker? Or am I going for a public to get a settler? I think I'm gonna go for a worker. Anyway, once this granary is complete, I'm going to build a sword altar. I'm gonna put my uh, city on production focus as well. So let's go get the calendar. Let's go get the dice. We might be able to say, sell them for a decent penny if we can get a quick declaration of friendship. Let's see. Uh, we will get calendar in two days, so let's just put our workers onto here. Now, I like that we have Leon to the west, because that means he might deal with some of the barbarians that are going to show up. So hopefully that should make it a little bit easier for us. We also see the Oma scouts over here. I could use the scouts to protect myself early game. Yeah, I'm going to have to fortify these guys now. They're taking a lot of damage. So in one day we can start working on the dice. It's too bad I haven't researched mining yet, because the stone would be kind of useful like that. But I'm going to go for mining right now, and then I... 
probably have to get archery so I can start defending myself against these raging barbarians because they're gonna be showing up very very soon okay so we can build the sword altar in 19 turns we could also cut down some forests to speed up the production and I think that's probably a good idea hey I'm the busiest man apparently with 10 production that's good to know it means I'm doing something right and there's another ruin let's hope these barbarians won't stop us Anyway, I'm getting thirsty. I always get thirsty from playing Civ. Ah! So, they did. They did block the ruins. That kind of sucks. Mm. I think the wise choice to do here is probably just to fortify up my scouts. I can't really fight two brutes. I do really want those ruins, though. If I fortify, I think they might attack, so... Maybe you just go away and come back and hope to snag the ruins? I don't know. Anyway, I think my next policy might be the honor opener, because I really want to get culture from fighting these barbarians right here. Yeah, as I thought, they're coming after me. Also, something is shooting on these scouts. So there's probably an archer nearby. As I thought, there is an archer nearby. Alright, so speaking of new leaders, here is Alm. Greetings, I'm Alm, king of the One Kingdom of Valencia. As long as you do not harm my people, our relationship will be a good one. So good old Alm right here. Since he's a new leader, let's take a look at him. He is a pretty cool leader. Let's check him out. So, Alm, um, his uh, civilization bonus is called Spirit of the Deliverance. So he gets a 20% combat bonus when fighting in friendly territory. And units require 50% less experience to reach their next level. Which is a pretty good bonus. He has two unique uh, units. First one is the Villager. And these I love these guys. When I read about Alm um, for the first time, I thought these guys sounded absolutely amazing. So, Villager is a unique Swordsman replacement. They don't really have anything special going for them, except that they don't need iron. But, the first time they kill someone, they get a unique random promotion. And this can be anything. Uh, there's a lot of different ones. This is very similar to the uh, the Chris Swordsman from Indone Indonesia. They get also, every time they enter combat, or for the first time they enter combat, they get a unique promotion that can also be bad. But I do believe the villagers can only get good promotions. And this is like everything from like, you know, more experience and bonus versus armored units or anything like that. It can be a myriad of different upgrades. Uh, Om also has the Baron, which is a unique pikeman that just has a shit ton of defense. But it requires iron, unless the, uh, unlike the regular pikeman. Heavy armor, there we go. 25% bonus to defense and an additional 15% bonus against range attacks. So the Baron is just a tanky pikeman on crack, pretty much. He also has this bonus versus mounted units. Pikemen are really good, especially when fortified. They're good defensive units, so Baron sounds pretty good. Not sure how good they are uh, on the offense, but they're certainly good on the defense, which is kind of the purpose of pikemen. Anyway, my scouts are going to get killed if I don't get them home. Also, uh, I'm going to get my dice. Now, one of the great things about opening up Liberty is that your workers work 25% faster. You are really going to feel this. Uh, it, most of your improvements will be done a lot quicker, and you'll realize that you don't need as many workers as you normally do. So if you're not used to opening up Liberty, you're going to have to change your playstyle a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to go drill two right here and finish off these barbarians. Too bad we're not getting any culture for it, but hey, um, that's the price we pay for getting, a, getting an early worker out. I do believe our next policy will definitely be honor, though. So I think we should probably swap around, send the spearmen home to defend, and have the scouts go exploring. But, just as I say that, looky here, look what we snagged. Boom. So, we we got the worker of an air by civilization, but because we didn't meet them yet, we didn't get the option to return it. Which is a little bit sad. Uh, but I, I am never saying no to another worker, though, since I'm going Liberty, like, a free worker isn't worth as much. But it's still fun to get, nevertheless. So let's bring this worker home. Uh, I would be interested in seeing who this is, but right now I think it's better to just get my spearmen home to protect myself. Because the barbarians are kind of starting to spawn in great numbers now, and I need to get home before they really start to attack us. Lost arrows, they're gonna pillage all my improvements. Yeah, here you go. They're fucking everywhere now. Um, did I not get mining? Oh, you need mason! I'm such a fucking moron. Of course you do. Oh my god, you know what? I'm just gonna cut down this wood instead. Yeah, so I need to really, really be careful there. Okay, so Leon wants to be my friend, and this is great, because this means I can sell the dice. 
Uh, Ro Ryoma also likes Leon. Most leaders like each other in the early game. That's how things usually go. He only has 72 gold though. I can get 240 gold for the dice, so I am gonna wait and see if his economy gets better. We'll see if it does. Anyway, let's chop down this forest. It's gonna take us three turns. Actually, you know what? If I had the ability to return this worker to whoever the civilization is right over here, I probably would have done it, because I do not need another worker at this point. Especially not with the liberty bonuses. It's just completely unnecessary. Anyway, I'm gonna go honor uh, the owner opener right now so I can get some bonuses against this archer. In fact, this archer is kind of fucking me over right now. So I'm probably gonna start attacking it a little bit. We'll see how it goes. It, the archer could actually kill my... No, wait. The zone of control is preventing them from moving past here, so that's why. Anyway, I probably need to seek some cover, I think, because these archers are being pretty nasty right now. As you can see, the, the barbarians are, are really starting to spawn right now. So we need to heal up our... We need to heal up our scouts so they can defend better, but ideally the scouts should be out scouting and not home fighting, which is why I'm bringing my spearmen home. Okay, so I really want to reveal iron, but I also need writing. We are playing, we're not playing on DD, we're playing on Immortal, but I still need to get uh, a library out fast. But sadly, one of my dice plantation is probably going to get pillaged right now. Ryoma wants a declaration of friendship, I am happy with that. Yeah, there we go. Boom goes the dice. Now luckily, since I am playing a liberty, actually, you know what, I'm gonna tempt these barbarians with this worker right here. It, hopefully the plan is that they're gonna go and, and capture my worker instead of pillaging the dice. And I think the barbarians are always set to capture workers if they... Never mind, I am an idiot. They're not set to always capture workers. But you see, it's gonna take me two turns to repair this, this plantation. I think normally without liberty, it would take me three days. So the bonus is already kicking in pretty strong right here, which is good to see. Anyway, let's grab scouting too. Almost tempted to get survival survivalism here, considering all the barbarians. But I just love having scouting too on my scouts. It just makes them able to see everything. I've just got to be really careful not to lose them. So let's send them back into Castle Ostia and let's rip here. And our spearmen have finally returned home. Finally. And we're about to get the sword altar in one day. I really hope we get it. I really hope we get it. Anyway, let's grab a farm here. We need some more food in Castle Ostia. One more turn. Will we get it? We will! Alright. We Sakaeans pray to the sky and the earth, the light of day and the darkness of night that engulfs this land. They produce wind, le lightning, fire, ice, and many other affinities. Every person on this planet is protected by one of the elements. Dian, the silver wolf, chief of the Kutala. Nice. Good old Dian. Looking out for us all. Alright, so we definitely need to expand soon, because we have a lot more uh, we have a lot more workers than we need now. We're gonna we're gonna build all the improvements and then we're gonna have nothing to do with our workers. However, since we can get a settler for free, actually, uh eh, It's gonna take us two policy instances until we get collective rule. I'm not really sure if I wanna do that. But I guess we need some archers first. If we wanna if we wanna be able to protect our borders, we definitely need a lot of archers. So that's exactly what I'm gonna go for. As you can see right here, the archers are we're already getting attacked, which is annoying as shit. But yeah, there's like a nice little like valley going down here, south of Castle Ostia. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, now that the spearmen are home, it should be pretty easy easy for us to protect our borders. But we still need more archers. But yeah, uh, you, you get a free settler uh, from collective rule, but that's two policies from now. So unless we can kill a lot of barbarians, it's gonna be difficult to uh, to get to get there quickly enough. So we might just have to build a settler the regular way. I definitely like this location right here. It's pretty good. Um, I definitely wouldn't mind expanding here or here. I think this place is better as far as expansions are concerned. So, but yeah, we're just gonna send out a bunch of, and actually, no, no, we're, we're building a library right now. And also, I think we're putting Castle Ostia on food focus, because we want it to grow. Even though this is going to reduce the production uh, of the library quite a bit, it's a trade-off we need. So right now, I think we need masonry, and then we want bronze working, because... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go with bronze working, because I want to reveal iron on the map. Since Hector is very dependent on iron to function, I want to make sure that I have iron. 
Om wants uh, an embassy. I am fine with this. He's all the way down here. Here we go. Leon wants an embassy. That's fine. Grado's actually under attack. Poor guy. Poor guy. Anyway, this archer is going to be dealt with rather easily. Do we want to... You know what? Maybe we should get ourselves a mine running. Or you know what? I'm actually going to chop down this forest first. But let's see what's around here. I do see a lot of potentially really good expansions around here. This is a really good, like, if I expand here, on this uh, on this very tile right here, that will give me gems and stone, which is really good. Also, someone just uh, built Great Library on turn 49, seems legit. This usually happens. I might have actually been able to get it, if I had gone for it. It's difficult to say, really. Turn 49 should be doable on standard speed. But hey. So, yeah, let's see, uh... See, we, we should have some more neighbors around here. We still haven't discovered whoever this is. I do not recognize the color. I mean, me and colors are always... I always had a restrained relationship with colors to begin with. But there also seems to be someone down here. So I'm a little bit worried. I think these brutes are probably going to try to snag my workers. Which is why I'm moving my spearmen down to meet them. But yeah, we could also try to go for the Tower of Volney, potentially. Uh, the Tower of Valny is a pretty good wonder. I really like it a lot. Anyway, let's see who this is. Hey! Ah, another traveler, I take it. Welcome to the Sakaean Plains. Feel free to look around all you want, just don't anger any of the local tribes. So, you guys remember when I said that uh, some leaders just spire a lot of control on Didi? Well, this is one of those. So, Lin, if you played any of the Vanilla Civ, she plays very much like Pocatello of the Shoshone. She expands like crazy. Like, she will take up half the map immediately. Now, in Didi, the AI gets a free settler at the start of the game, and they also get massive reductions to production cost of their settlers. Lin just ended up taking over half the world, and there was no one who could stop her. Absolutely. She's still gonna be scary now, but on Didi, it's impossible to have Lin in the game, because she just wins. There's nothing... Like, when the AI has 40 cities by turn 200, there's very little you can do to stop them. So, uh, uh, let's just get an embassy with her immediately, because, you know, Lin, ha Lin X Hector, best pairing, yo. Uh, so, Lin is pretty interesting. I actually talked a little bit with the guy who designed her, and I really agree with many of his uh, design philosophies. So, again, plays very much like the Shoshone. She, every unit starts with a Shock 1 promotion, which is kind of similar to Hector's bonus, except that it's more offensive in nature. Um, horses are doubled, that's nice, because she does need horses. And all pastures provide plus one culture and plus one food. This is very strong. Now, her first unique unit is called the Myrmidon. It's a very similar to Ryoma's Swordmaster. It's actually, I think it's almost identical. It's a um, swordman that do not require iron. And it also comes with Vantage, which allows it to attack twice. Of course, being able to attack twice on a melee unit, not as good as a ranged unit, but it's still pretty good. But her second unique unit is what worries me the most. The, the Nomadic Trooper. It's a Chariot Archer that can go through forests, so they can move freely through forests, they are not slowed down by it, and they got 10 range combat strength and 10 combat strength. Like, compare this to the Chariot Archer, which it replaces, which has 6 melee combat strength and 10 range combat strength. Very, very, very strong unit. And it does require horses, I'm not sure if it costs the same, 56 hammers versus, yeah, it costs the same, but it's still a really good unit, because, of course, what slows down the Chariot Archers is rough terrain. The Nomadic Trooper doesn't give a shit about rough terrain, particularly not forest. It just travels through forests like it's nothing. So these guys can be used to great effect in the early game to really raid your enemies. Now, luckily, Lin is not a very aggressive leader at all. In fact, she's very peaceful, much more peaceful than Pocatello. However, she I think she has like an expansive nature of like 10 or 11, which is the highest in the game. So she will just spam settlers and settle everywhere. And because, of course, she's an AI on, on Immortal, she just gets... A massive amount of bonuses to happiness, so she doesn't really affect her as much. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a good time to make a cut. Uh, we're on turn 52. We haven't really started to settle our first city yet, but we're going to eventually. But at least we got the Sword Altar, which is nice. Sadly, it doesn't have a retroactive effect, so it doesn't affect the two workers we already have. But every other worker and settler we build in Castle Lost is going to have three move, which is going to help my expansion out a lot. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, do give this episode a like and a comment. It helps out the channel a lot. And as always, my name is Van Mengs, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.